Okay, good evening. This is Thomas Freed on the Liberty Works Radio Network. This is the Truth Attack Hour, and yes, that's right. We're back. We're back with the Truth Attack. So, let's get right into it today. We are the Liberty Works Radio Network, and we do need the support of the members of the listening audience to keep the network operating and the broadcast coming. So if you enjoy the show and the information, the discussions, the guests on the other shows, we sure would appreciate it if you'd find your way over to the LibertyWorksRadioNetwork.com website if you're not right now there already listening and get signed up as a subscribing member, even if it's as little as $10, $20 a month. Every subscription and membership helps, and we do need your support to keep the network operating and the broadcast coming and the information flowing for this is one of the few media outlets where we're trying to give you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. For truth is the word of God and the truth shall make you free. And freedom comes from God, not government. So, Put your faith in God, not man, not government, not institution, and not philosophy. For every single one of those others are controlled by men who will take advantage of your misplaced faith, betray you, and use it to enslave you to whatever form of existence they've put in place in the day. So, there you go. And that, my friends, is the history of the government of humanity. Put your faith in the wrong entity, you get enslaved and ultimately sacrificed, either in combat, in war, or in religious fanaticism. So, America, the supremacy of reason, the first nation of kings where every man is sovereign unto his own castle, the Government is not the sovereign. It is not the owner of the property. It is a limited government of limited, specifically prescribed powers that put it in the position of being a representative government, supposedly. But when you have laws like the federal income tax law that divide the American people into classes, you destroy the system of unified representation intended under the Constitution as the diametrically opposed political philosophies of freedom under the Constitution and socialism under the Communist Manifesto or some other guise and pretense for governance, you lose the opportunity to live free. The choice is simple, God or government. And Constitution provides for the supremacy of reason and the individual rights and liberties opposed to the power of the state. It's a limited government of limited power specifically enumerated to create the representative government. And when law, like the income tax, divides the people into classes, the politicians then have to pick one class or the other to represent. And America no longer has a unified representation system of politics. It becomes divisive class warfare as each group of politicians representing each separate class of persons argue for preferential treatment under the law for their class and detrimental treatment under the law for all the other classes. And thus, We lose the system of uniform law that treats every man and every person equally under the law in rights and in property and in accusation. And ultimately, a system that allows for different laws to be enforced against different people, against different times, for different arbitrary and capricious causes becomes exactly that. 100% arbitrary and capricious. It opens the door to arbitrary and outlandish charges that can be brought against any person to try and discredit and destroy them. 
And this, of course, is exactly what's happening to Donald Trump because of this divisive system and destructive and unconstitutional system of non-uniform taxation under the brackets defined literally by Section 1 of the income tax, tax imposed. It is an unconstitutional system of class warfare that has resulted. It was never a tax intended to be imposed on the labors of the American people or on the fruits of labor derived from the simple exercise of the right to work. The whole system is straight out of the Communist Manifesto, which has as its second plank a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. It has as its fifth plank a monopoly on currency and credit given to a quasi private government banking system like the Federal Reserve, and it has as the tenth plank the federal centralized government control of public education and its curriculum so that the children don't get educated, they get indoctrinated with propaganda of the day. And that way the government can make sure that each new generation of slaves will stay slaves without ever understanding the true nature of what's been done to them by the government through this insidious injection of communist planks in place of constitutional taxation. America is being destroyed by the class warfare and the only way to stop it is to get rid of the divisive income tax. Remove taxation from the backs of labor in its entirety and move it, transfer it back over onto the corporate subjects that it was always intended to be laid upon. And how did the corporate subjects come to be able to evade the tax that was intended to be laid on only them? Well, it's clear, it's obvious, they did it by exaggerating expenses to eliminate profits. And since income is defined as profits in the corporate world, not just earnings, as it is for the individual in practice and operational practice, since profit is defined as income, the corporations avoid having any profits. They run their businesses to avoid profits. Now, who wants to invest in that piece of crap? You're running your company to not have profits? How will I ever get my investment bank back? And aren't your books, like, just cooked with fake numbers to exaggerate expenses to eliminate profits any way you can? Well, that's what Main Street thinks. And they've gotten away with it. The corporations earn billions and pay now tax. Meanwhile, they're sitting on billions in cash. That's where all the cash has migrated to, to the wealthy who have access to the <coughs> money at the Federal Reserve Bank through connections. So, we have a serious problem in this country, and it all stems out of the income tax and the divisive political system that results from that, pre prevents the politicians from working together to pass what's good for the American people, because they're only working at odds with each other to pass what's good for their group of citizens, their class that they represent, and is bad for the other people's class and doesn't help them. So, what are you going to do? Oh, I, I got to throw this in. Did you see Joe Biden's, uh, actually, I'm not sure what position he has in the government. He's uh, on, on the economic forum or uh, has to do with the bank. He was sitting on TV talking about how yeah, the government prints money and then they, uh, yeah, they print money and then they sell bonds. And, and uh, I mean, the guy is supposed to be in charge of what, and he has no idea at all, no idea at all of how currency is brought into circulation. He doesn't understand that what happens is the bills, the notes, the Federal Reserve notes, it's not United States dollars, it says so on the top of every single note in existence, Federal Reserve note. 
It's not U.S. dollars. He doesn't understand that the federal government, through the Bureau of Printing and Engraving, is printing exclusively for the Federal Reserve Bank notes for them to own. And they own them because when they need, say, a million dollars in cash to send to a bank where depositors are running on the bank because it's been discovered the bank manager was a criminal and was defrauding the people and stealing their money instead of <coughs> holding the deposits. So they need money to put at the bank, let's say, theoretically a million dollars. They send an order to the U.S. Treasury Bureau of Printing and Engraving for $10,100 bills. That's a million dollars. And included with their order for $10,100 bills, they send a check for $400. Four cents, the cost of labor, ink, and paper. Four cents for each note. $400, and the Federal Reserve Bank buys $1 million worth of currency. Of course, for $4,000, they could buy $10 million worth of currency. But you see how the numbers add up, right? Now, my question is, will the Bureau of Printing and Engraving print notes for you for four cents each? Can you buy $100 bills from the Treasury for four cents each? What happened to equal access? What happened to equal opportunity? What happened to equal rights? What happened to equal protection? There isn't any. You've been made a slave by the government selling paper currency to the Federal Reserve Bank. And then what happened? Then what happens is the Federal Reserve Bank lends it into existence. Do you think they lend the million dollars in notes they bought for the $400 it cost them to buy the million? No, 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 don't be stupid. They don't lend it for 400 bucks. They lend it for a million, full face value plus interest. And guess who they lend it to? That's right, your government that just sold it to them for $400. So for every $400 the government takes in, they saddle you and your progeny with $1 million in debt at $35,000 in interest every year for every single million dollars borrowed throughout history. And that's why you have a $35 trillion debt. Your government has sold $35 trillion in notes, currency and credit to the Federal Reserve Banks for nothing. For nothing. For nothing. Literally. And this guy on the Biden administration, oh, they, so they, they print paper. No, they don't just print the paper, you idiot. They print the paper and they sell it to the bank. And the bank then lends it back to the government and into the private sector at full face value. And that's why you have $35 trillion in debt. And as long as the American people allow their labor to be collectively collateralized to service the debt, because that's what's really happening with the money taken from your paycheck. It's not going into the U.S. Treasury as required by law under Section 7809, Title 26. Title 26, 7809 says every penny collected as tax must be deposited in the treasury on a daily basis. That means the money taken out of your paycheck, allegedly collected as tax, should be in the treasury at the end of the year. But it isn't, is it? That's why you have to file a return to pay tax that hasn't yet been paid. But how is it possible they took tax out of your paycheck all year long? The law requires the tax to be deposited in the treasury, and yet none of the money made it to the treasury. None of the money made it to the treasury. That's why you got to file to pay the tax that hasn't been paid. So where did it go? It went right to the Federal Reserve Bank, of course. There's no tax imposed on your labor. They don't have to impose money that you voluntarily contribute to the government. They only have to put tax in the treasury. But since there is no tax imposed on your labor or your work or your employment, other than the Social Security and unemployment tax that the employer has to pay, they don't have to put the money that you voluntarily contribute as income tax. The employer doesn't make any matching payments with respect to that particular withholding. And there's no law that requires it. In fact, the law prohibits it from being collected. 3402N overrides the apparent authority of the employer to collect the tax in the first place at 3402A. So it's a system of peonage that routes the withheld money to the Federal Reserve Bank to collateralize the debt run up by Congress in a system of virtual peonage taken from the 11th century plantation peonage plantation system. 
Okay, I think we're going to be coming up on the first commercial break here in a couple of minutes. So remember, God's true plan for mankind is freedom derived from faith in God.
Okay, this is Thomas Freed on the Liberty Works Radio Network, and let's just get right back into it. When that commercial break came up, I was talking about how we need to get rid of the income tax entirely. Taxing corporate profits have allowed them to avoid the tax by exaggerating expenses and have forced onto the backs of labor the entire burden of the system because those individual persons don't get to deduct the same expenses the corporate person does and they are effectively taxed on all of their earnings without regard to profit or income as earnings are defined as profit for the man who labors for a living as though there were no value in one hour of work to a laborer. So it's all profit. There's no basis that equals the amount of money he got compensated for one hour of work. There's no profit in $8 an hour for the laborer. There's no profit in $15 an hour for many laborers. That's an equal exchange of value for value without profit being realized by either party. And if there was a profit that was realized by either party, that party would not continue the transaction longer than it would take to find a replacement of either the job or the worker. Now, there's no profit in an hour's wage. This is the fraud, another element of the fraud in the system. When you work, it's all income and profit. When the company earns money, it's all deductible expenses. Surprise! They pay no tax and you pay it all. So you got to end the income tax if you want your freedom back, if you want your country back, if you want your financial system back, if you want quality of life back, if you want affordable purchases and products and food, you have to end the income tax and terminate this nonsensical endless printing and borrowing, printing and borrowing. As goes the currency, so goes the fate of the nation. You're experiencing that over the last four years of this Biden insanity, economic insanity, military insanity, border insanity, criminal insanity, judicial insanity. They've gone completely bat crazy. So the solution is to terminate the system that has enslaved the people and forced, compelled, allowed the corporate entities to make a fascist merger with the government bureaucracy. And when you combine the enormous wealth of the corporate bureaucracy with the enormous political power of the government bureaucracy, you have a bureaucracy that the individual people cannot oppose and which the states will be ultimately overwhelmed by their inability. As precedents get set in California where it's accepted and then moved across the country where it's not. So the solution, terminate the income tax and instead tax all corporate earnings every single month at a flat 4%, no deductions. Tax earnings at 4%. Every single company, every single business, no individuals pay tax anymore. It's your labor, it's your work, it's the fruits of labor, it's your property when you make a gain. No tax on individuals. We need the resources to afford to live in this insane economic environment Biden has created with his inability to logic or reason two plus two. He didn't know that if he forced up the price of gasoline, every single product and every single shelf would go up and cause inflation, not because of monetary policy, but because of energy policy. They still don't understand it. They're still waiting to try and fix an energy policy problem with monetary policy. The interest of the inflation is never coming down. As long as energy is too expensive, and getting more expensive intentionally because of policy. As long as energy goes up, inflation goes up. It's not only driven by monetary policy, it's driven by cost structures. When intentional increases in the cost structure are imposed, it creates an effect of inflation. You want inflation? Wait until next year when the trillions of dollars that they let and they borrowed actually make it into the public arena through contracts, which are taking the government a couple of years to let. That money hasn't even been released yet. You got no monetary policy inflation. This is energy. 
And the only way to fix it is put Donald Trump back in. And the only way to fix the class warfare is to end the income tax and tax corporate earnings every single month at 4%, not income profit at 40% when there is none. That will make every single company operating in the United States of America, domestic and foreign, become a meaningful contributor to the U.S. Treasury every month on a monthly basis. And then Congress has to learn how to live within that budget. <clears throat> and you write good law, they'll make more money and you'll get more tax. You write bad law, the companies will make less and you'll get less tax revenue. You have a direct feedback loop with the tax dollars being raised from the subjects of the federal government without enslaving the American people who were finally given the opportunity to keep the money they earn and improve their lot in life and quality of life. It's the reason why we have two worker families with half the money being taken, stolen for tax. You need to have the wife working as well to have enough income between the two of them, each getting half, to have one wage to live off of. You terminate the income tax and you can go back to the family values at home where the mother is involved with the education and the raising of the kids rather than tossing them into the streets or government subsidized health care or putting them in the public schools where they're not educated, they're indoctrinated and exposed to violence and taught to be afraid except for a very few schools that the politicians, of course, send their kids to. There isn't, I don't think there's a single politician in Washington, D.C. that sends their child to public school in Washington, D.C. They all send them to the private schools. Sidwell Friends, where Clinton sent his kids and Obama sent his kids. St. Albans, National Cathedral, St. Stephen's, Georgetown Prep. Georgetown Visitation, St. Anselm's. This is where the politicians' kids go to the private schools, to the Catholic schools, to the people that know how to educate children. And don't just let them become stupid, violent, and addicted because of their exposure to the public school environment. It's a system of enslavement and abuse and privilege. And it's not based on color, people. It's not based on color. It's not white privilege. It's political privilege. It's financial privilege. Black and white, Christian, Jewish, got nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. So the solution is to tax corporate earnings at 4%. Every single penny you earn, no deductions every month, send it in. At the end of the year, you file a return to consolidate the 4% across your annual earnings. Either getting a small refund for overpaying for the first 11 months on the final accounting or sending in the last check with the final accounting for the earnings for the year. And now the IRS can focus on the companies that are lying and hiding income. And oh yeah, there's no reason at all why the earnings of these companies earned overseas can't be taxed. For some reason, there's this false belief that the government can't tax earnings that are held overseas when they're made. That's nonsense. If you're an American corporation, we're not taxing the earnings because of where they're made. We're taxing the earnings because of your privilege of incorporation. And that means the privilege can be taxed and the earnings can be taxed regardless of where on the planet they're made. Regardless of where in the planet they're made, the corporate earnings can be taxed on the basis of the corporate privilege, which subjects them to excise taxation from all sources. Oh, we'll have to give them a break so they'll bring the money home. Uh, let them bring it home tax-free. You idiot! You have no idea. You have no idea. Complete and total lack of understanding of taxation in America. Complete and total lack of understanding. It's just nutty. It's just nutty. Okay, well, we've burned up two segments here almost, talking about the uh, unconstitutional nature of the federal income tax. Maybe that's a good thing. Let's try and do some current events here. I guess the first thing we got to talk about 
is this absolutely ridiculous trial in New York that has halted, apparently, all the other trials. You don't hear a word about any of them. And has focused all of the media attention 100% on, get this, guys, this trial in New York about bookkeeping records and um, a payment to Stormy Daniels to basically shut up and go away is this is a trial about the 2016 election. This is a criminal trial of Donald Trump for an alleged crime, which is nonsense, there is no crime, that happened over eight years ago. This is eight years old, and only now they bring the charges? This is as politicized, obviously politicized, as it can be. And Stormy Daniels doesn't have any relevant testimony to make. She wasn't part of the bookkeeping. Nobody's denying she got a check. It's completely legal and not a campaign violation to pay women to shut up and go away. A dozen Democrats have done it. Nobody said a word. Nobody said a word. It's not a campaign law violation. It's not a federal violation of law. The book entries are all proper. They were fees paid to an attorney. How the attorney utilized the money is a separate bookkeeping issue off of the Trump books. And to bring in the whore, Stormy Daniels, put her on the stand and have her relate alleged sex with the president before he was president has nothing to do with the trial. It's about slandering and smearing Donald Trump, trying to discredit him with libel and slander. The whole trial is nothing but Democrat libel and slander. It's all made up. The judge is afflicted. He's mentally insane. He's afflicted with TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. He's no longer a sane and stable individual. He's not able to administer in the court impartially. And it's obvious at every turn. He's imposed a gag order on the president and is requiring him to sit here at this meaningless trial that he had nothing to do with. He didn't do the book entries. He doesn't need to be there. The whole point of keeping him there is to prevent him from campaigning. It's election interference of the highest order. It's Kafkaesque, Orwellian, Nazi, fascism, Tantan Makut. The only thing missing is the actual assassination. So this whole thing in New York is completely made up. Eight years ago, oh, here's a bookkeeping entry where they paid an attorney to pay a woman. Yeah, um, that's like how bookkeeping is done, you idiot. It's just as crazy as the, oh, he overvalued his real estate. Um, the bank doesn't think so. They got all their money back with interest. They want to do another deal with him. All of these cases are made up. He has presidential immunity in the documents case. He has presidential immunity in the Washington, D.C., January 6th. Uh, insurrection. Because there was no insurrection. He was never accused. He was never convicted. You can't make crap up. The only reason why they put the word insurrection as the label on the January 6th event was so that they could try and use that clause in the Constitution to take Donald Trump off the ballot. It's all fundamental fraud that was contrived right from the beginning. It's Nancy Pelosi conspiracy to interfere in the election. It was all contrived. Every single bit of it, every single case. Half of the DA's prosecuting the case ran for office promising to prosecute Donald Trump. For what? There was no investigation. There was no crime. They picked the man and then went looking for the crime. Show me the man. I'll find you the crime. That's not how a criminal justice system that wants to preserve its integrity functions or operates. Okay, sounds like we're coming up on the second commercial break. Still haven't gotten to much current events. We'll be back in five minutes. This is Thomas Freed on the LibertyWorksRadioNetwork.com. Get over to the website. Get signed up as a subscribing member. Freedom comes from God. Truth shall make you free. Where's the break? What are you going to do?
forgot to switch to Okay, this is Thomas Freed on the Liberty Works Radio Network. This is the Truth Attack Hour, and I'm going to get right back into it in a moment here. If you want to get fully informed on this income tax fraud and how to fix it, you want to find your way over to tax-freedom.com. 
and start reading or find your way over to irszoom.com and pick yourself up a copy of either The Simple Truth About Income Tax, which is a 75-page PDF download primer on the income tax, the subject matter jurisdiction fraud, and the proof that the courts have been defrauding the American people for 75 years, which comes out of the Donald Trump tax law changes in 2018, where Congress had to state on the congressional record the constitutional authority for the income tax, where it was declared to be Article 1, Section 8, and not the 16th Amendment, which is what the courts have been telling you for 75 years out of judicial legislation. They made it up. They made it up. And they've used it to enslave the American people. And not a bit of it is true. And it's all right there on taxfreedom.com, irszoom.com, and it's fully documented and explained in the 800-page <clears throat> compendium, the American Tax Bible, which is also available there for just $50. So it's the simple truth about income tax for four as a primer, where you can take the college degree level course for 50 bucks. Get educated, learn the truth, wake up, take back your freedom, take back your life, take back your paycheck, take back your country, take back your government. Because one of the ways that you've lost your government is allowing the corporations to deduct political lobbying as one of the expenses that eliminates the profits they would be paying tax on. So instead of paying the money to the treasury as tax, they're paying the money to the politicians to corrupt them and buy them and own them and bribe them to convince them to write law for the companies instead of the people. Don't you get it? And they're doing it on your back. Because this is all money deducted from the earnings as expenses. And it gets routed straight to corrupt assholes like Joe the Coward Biden. Hiding Biden, the lion pathological fool. This man lies every time he opens his mouth, doesn't he? The whole cabinet lies. They're all pathological liars. Either that or they're drunk on Kool-Aid, so drunk they're delusional. They appear to be living in a parallel universe. Joe is on TV. Oh, inflation was 9% when I took off it. You pathological liar. You sociopath. Inflation was 1.4% when Joe took office, and the first thing he did was kill the Keystone Pipeline, kill the leases, kill the permits, slow walk everything for energy, shut it down. And that's what caused the price creases immediately. The oil futures market spiked and prices started going up, creating the increased costs of goods that get measured ultimately as inflation. And he's still... He still doesn't get it. The man's an idiot. He's an idiot. Oh, we have the best economy in the world. In the world. Yeah, you idiot, because we have the strongest currency in the world, which you're printing into oblivion. As goes the currency, so goes the fate of the nation. And it ain't so strong anymore, Joe. In the third quarter, it was 4.9% GDP, which wasn't bad. In the fourth quarter of 2023, it was 3.4, down from 4.9. And in the first quarter of 2004, it was 1.6. It's fallen by 50% for three consecutive months. No, you don't have the best economy in the world anymore. You just have the strongest currency, which you are destroying. Destroying, as goes the currency, so goes the fate of the nation. And they are running it out. He's an economic fool, an idiot. The only people who are enjoying a better economy are the illegal aliens. All the full-time jobs are going to. Americans are having to take part-time jobs, are being fired from full-time jobs, are being pushed on to unemployment, and are being forced into the workplace to take third jobs or go back to work as a senior because the cost of life has gotten so high 
their earnings don't cover it anymore. They have to make extra money. And Biden, this wonderful idiot, says he's going to let the Trump tax cuts expire if he gets elected and raise taxes and lower deductions on every single person in the country. He doesn't care that you're already suffering. He thinks it's the best economy in the world. He doesn't understand. There are two parallel universes at work in America right now, Wall Street and Main Street. Wall Street is where all the printed COVID money went into the institutions and the stock market. Main Street is dying for lack of capital and stressing for inability to meet debt obligations every month. Credit cards are maxed out. Retirement plans are being tapped. Pensions are being tapped. Equities are being drawn down. Main Street is suffering because the Fed is waiting for monetary policy to fix an energy policy problem. It's at 3.9. That's as low as it's going to get till you fix the petroleum prices. It's the cost of energy that's keeping the cost up. It ain't getting no lower till you fix that. They're not going to fix that, so you're never going to see inflation go below that 3.5% rate. It's always going to be high, too high, until Donald Trump gets back in office, fixes petroleum, drives the price of gas back down to $2, and then inflation will drop to the 2 and the Fed will start lowering interest rates. Maybe too late for Main Street. The recession is coming fast and hard. Like I say, they dropped, well, it wasn't 50% three consecutive months. It was 30% in the third quarter, 50% in the fourth, and 50% to the first quarter. So the economy has fallen apart, Joe. It's only Wall Street that's booming along. And at some point, Wall Street's going to wake up to the reality that Main Street isn't doing very well. The companies may be making good earnings, but that's because they're using AI and technology to replace workers and COVID <coughs> taught them <coughs> or gave them a chance to become more efficient, lean and mean, less people, more automation. So they didn't need to hire everybody back, which is, of course, where all the jobs Joe claims he created actually came from, not from Joe or anything he created, but they for jobs that came back after COVID. Oh no, I created those. You liar, you pathological liar. And Joe had more deaths from COVID than Trump, more crime, more illegal immigration, more fentanyl deaths, more cartel violence, damage operations, labs and seizures, more lost embassies, 11. Trump had three Abraham Accords, peace treaties in the Middle East, first time for 60 years. Everybody laughed at him when he said he'd do it. Nobody else has ever done it. Only Trump. Biden started a war with his weakness and senility and dementia and inability to make a decision, always playing the middle against both ends or both ends against the middle. Oh, anti-Semitism is no good. We have to stop it. But I'm not going to give promised weapons to Israel if they try and kill the anti-Semites. Because I might lose a few votes in Michigan and Minnesota. And I can't afford to lose any votes in those states. So we're supporting the Nazi terrorists who want to eradicate Israel and Jew by not delivering the weapons already promised by Congress to Israel. Of course, until Donald Trump gets in office, and I think Israel knows that, and I'll bet you dollar to donuts, their response to Biden is basically F you, Joe. We don't need your weapons right now. We can carry out everything that's been planned with our own equipment and munitions and abilities. So you can just sit on it and rotate. Because we know that when Donald Trump pushes your ass out of office, the policies will all come back to our side of the table. And this insane love of terrorists in Iran and Gaza, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, where Joe refuses to shut them down and actually funded Iran, which of course used the fungible funds, to fund the Hamas attack on October 7th. And Joe is def 
preventing Israel from shutting down the threat once and for all. And all this nonsense in the street about free Palestine. These idiots, these idiots. I don't know where they're getting the propaganda. Palestine has been free of Jewish control and influence for 20 years. They walked out in 2004. They burned their villages to the houses. They destroyed the houses and the settlements. And they left. There was a lot of anger about that in Israel. But they did it. They walked out in 2004. They haven't been there since. And what did the Palestinians do with their freedom? They elected terrorists, Hamas, to run the place. And how much economic activity and progress has been made there since that time 19 years ago? None. None. Zero. Hamas stole all the money for, the, for, for utility grid. They stole all the money for food. They stole all the money to make improvements. They stole all the money to build a network of tunnels under hospitals and schools from which to wage their terrorist war on Israel. Where do, where do people not understand that the new Nazis of today is this radical Islamic hatred of the Jews and desire to eradicate them? They are the new world Nazis. Do the students of this country understand what they're really supporting? From the river to the sea? You Nazi! These people need to be called out and exposed for what they are. Oh, it's a little extreme, Tom. Oh, you think so? No, I think what's extreme is what's happening in the college campuses, in the streets. Death to America? I'm the extremist? I'm sorry. You're an idiot! You're an idiot! These people are screaming to destroy America and bring down the government. And Biden sits there and says, oh, well, they have a right to peace. Yeah, to peacefully protest, but none of this was peaceful. They broke glass, they broke windows, they invaded buildings. And they didn't cry for an honest election. They cried to burn down death to America. You want insurrection? It's been on the liberal side since Black Lives Matter. That's where the insurrection is occurring. Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi tried to pull a coup on Donald Trump with the Russian collusion dossier fraud, lie, and nonsense. She tried to pull and energize the lawfare and the weaponization of the Justice Department by denying Donald Trump's request to have National Guard troops deployed on the Capitol on January 6th. And then she pulled back the guards and didn't have them there so that the invasion of the Capitol was in no doubt was never in question. She allowed it to occur so that she could label it insurrection so that they could use the clause in the amendment to try and take Donald Trump off of the ballot. It was all engineered and manufactured, every single bit of it, every single bit of it, and every single lawsuit they're pursuing him for. It was all engineered and manufactured. And I've explained all of that on shows before. I have them all listed up on my YouTube channel, at Thomas Freed, which you can link to from my website, which is, uh, which is over at taxfreedom.com. Right there. So, you know, I think I hear the music coming up for the end of the show. This is Thomas Freed on the Liberty Works Radio Network. We'll be back next week with more forever. And hope you enjoy the show. Check me out over on the Thomas Freed YouTube channel, which you can link to off of taxfreedom.com. I'm trying to build an audience and need as many subscribers as we can to get the YouTube algorithms to distribute the videos and the information that I've put out to free the American people. Good enough, good enough, good enough. No, thank you. Later. You too.